It's National Championship Saturdays. We welcome you back to KSPK's Grizzly Connect. Bryant Johnson with sophomore Tabor Stevens. It's Joplin, Missouri. It's the 2012 Cross Country Championships. It's a moment that you are experiencing for the second time in your career. But what is different about last season compared to this season? Um, I guess last season is my first time, and I knew I could do really well. But I guess now this year it's like I can try and win. And I definitely wasn't thinking that last year. Well, there there really wasn't as much hype and kind of perceived success going into last year for both the men and the women. When you have a group of females that all year have been equally as successful, maybe not in the rankings since they've been behind Augustana all year, what's the conversation like with you and, and Alicia and Kelly and Alyssa Selvey and all these women who want to bring back a championship with the men this year? I think we're all uh, like – we're really stoked to do that, and we both want it really bad. And I guess last year, uh, neither team was as dominant as they are this year, so it's more expected this year. And uh, I guess there's a bit of pressure. A little bit of pressure, but you've performed every step of the way. It started your freshman year, reaching All-American status. You've grown leaps and bounds this year. What do you attribute to making the jump from your freshman to sophomore season? Um. I mean, probably just a lot of uh, just putting the miles in and, you know, just physical development as you get older. But uh, I think pressure is a privilege. And uh, so that's what you get here at Adams State. It's a privilege to be uh, expected to do, um, you know, big races and perform really well. It's Tabor Stevens with the Adams State men's cross country team. Uh, Damon Martin loves raving about traveling with you, which is so, so interesting to hear coaches discuss the coach side conversations when you're in those big buses and you're traveling throughout Colorado. But two weeks into your freshman year, you were an HPPE uh, major. You're kind of looking to see what really captivated you, though. Physical geography was something that actually attached itself to you, where, where you realized on a lot of these trips that you had more knowledge about the geographical development of a lot of the, the mountain ranges here and we're just so knowledgeable where did that come from and and when did it, it mesh from being an interest to a passion um i guess i've just learned a ton uh, mostly from dr beaton here at the school uh i've taken a bunch of classes with him and, and also dr benson and i just remember a lot of stuff they teach <laughs> me so and a, a lot of the stuff they teach about it applies directly here to the valley the San Juan Mountains and the San Grays. So I know a lot about those, and sometimes I tell Coach about it. W what's one thing that if we're driving through La Vida Pass and it's just another drive where a lot of people would be anticipating hours of arduous time spent on the road going to all these different RMAC sites, but if, if I'm sitting next to you and we're going through the pass, what's one thing you would say, hey, Bryant, you should probably learn this? <laughs> okay, when you come down, uh, when you're coming into Walsenburg, well, before you get to Walsenburg, you got the Spanish Peaks and uh, you know those Twin Mountains, and they're uh, they're basically the inside uh, hardened lava of some extinct volcanoes, and that's the inside, and the outside of the volcano is eroded away and it's gone. So I mean, being in, in Canyon City and growing up kind of in the shadow of all of these incredible developments, what does that do to kind of create a, a bigger attachment to the area? I and mean, this is your home. This is an area you've grown up in, and and I'm sure it really creates more excitement performing in a place like this yeah um i definitely like uh you know representing uh, my area i'm proud to be from canyon city and the valley so uh yeah well, where does this go though okay so where does a degree in, in physical geography where does it, it take you what are some of the studies that that you would actually implement in a career okay, um you know you can be uh an arc gis professional uh, make maps for people, uh, you know, whatever they want, you can make it for them, or you can be park ranger, forest service, stuff like that. Uh, what, what, what captivates your attention of what you just mentioned? Um, all, pretty much all of those I'm kind of interested in. Um, I haven't, I don't have one thing that I'm dead set that I want to be or anything, but, you know, the whole field interests me, and I would pretty much do anything. Well, what if Coach Martin contracts you to create maps for other RMAC teams with the intent of misleading them on the track course? Is that a good idea? That, I could probably do that. <laughs> yeah, I know how to do that. So, but you know how to mislead people or know how to make maps to mislead them? Of the yeah, two, which one? You can, you can lie with maps. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> it's Tabor Stevens with Out of State University, uh, somebody that really I see out running all the time, not just uh, in a casual manner, but w with this look in your eyes, like, don't get in my way. When I see you out <laughs> and you're just, you're training by yourself, uh, some guys run in packs, some women run in packs, but you're out solo in, in Alamosa a lot. What, what does that do for the solitude and, and for the kind of preparation of the actual meet? Yeah, uh, it definitely makes you think a lot. Uh, there's nothing else to do. Just just look around, uh, be cold, and and think a lot. So <laughs> you think about your races and what you need to do to be ready. So w when are you at your most mentally ready for a race? Is it morning of, right before, in the middle of a race? When does everything just calm and, and ease up for you? I'm usually um, I'm usually not really ever very tense before a race. I I don't really get nervous anymore, but uh. I'm you know I'm ready to go once uh, once we get on the line and you know we're waiting for the commands to start the race that's when I'm ready to go and I know it's time to get serious and go really hard and when, when do you have a sense though when do you have a sense that this could be not a good day but a great day is it during the race is it is it right before I mean when, when you're talking about the performance of a race how does your body tell you that this is going to be a great day yeah um, if it's in the middle of a race, like, uh, you get really in tune with how your legs feel. And so you can tell if your legs are overly tired and you're not going to be able to finish crazy well. But probably in the middle of the race, if my legs feel a certain way that I know, then I know uh, um, I might win. When you look at, at today's race, a championship opportunity, uh, w when you analyze where you've come from, from a small school in Canyon City to being an All-American your freshman year, and now... This could be a string. We've seen it in the gym with uh, all of the awards and, and the national championships that were strung together in almost threes, three straight years, 08, 09, 10. What do you think for the next three years? How realistic is it to reel off three national championships in a row? You've got you've got the returners, which is the only reason I ask. And, of course, Adam State is spoiled where people think, oh, it's just so easy. Adam State has won all the no, – none of these championships are easy. But wh wh what is the realistic possibility of all of this? Um, I, yeah, it's definitely very realistic. Uh, I mean, last year we lost, so probably the hardest part is starting off again and getting the next one. But uh, I think that's very realistic. And then, yeah, we have a lot of guys returning. We're not going to lose our whole team after this year. So, yeah, I mean, you got to take one year at a time. Uh, anything can happen, but it's totally possible with, you know, the people we have. What have you heard from from guys like Ryan McNiff that were here before you that won national championships? Who, who has chimed in and, and given you a little advice before this race? Um. Yeah, uh, Aaron Braun. He was. Big running back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people know who Aaron Braun is. Uh, you know, sometimes I see him, and he tells me pointers and stuff. Yeah. Well, it, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a fun event. I, I know there's there probably felt like there was more pressure going into your first one, and pressure's still there. But you seem like a different different person this year, Tabor. You know, look, you look like a, a little more a little more tense, a little more of a, of a young buck. With that, with that wild look in your eyes, and y you know you may be a sophomore, but you kind of conduct yourself like you've been in this game for a long time, and, and we wish you all the best. Yeah, thanks a lot. We'll chat with Tabor's female counterpart. It's Alicia Nelson after this break on KSPK.